The main character in a nearly normal family is the teenage Stella Sandell, played by Alexandra Tireforce. At handball camp, at the age of 15, Stella was sexually assaulted by her considerably older assistant coach, Robin. Stella reported what had happened to her parents, a priest called Adam and her mother Ulrika, a law professor. However, due to the course of events, Ulrika and her husband decided not to file a complaint or pursue legal action. Four years later, it's evident that Stella, who is now 19 years old, is dealing with a great deal of unresolved pain. Her developing romantic relationship with an older man, Christopher, whom she and her closest friend Amina met one evening while out partying, is another factor complicating matters. There will be spoilers for Netflix as a nearly normal family. Stella is detained as the main suspect in the first episode after being charged with Chris's murder. The next five episodes center on Ulrika and Adam's relentless search for the truth as they manage their failing marriage and attempt all in their power to establish their daughter's innocence. Ulrika is involved in a romantic relationship with Mikhail, a co-worker who also serves as Stella's lawyer. Ulrika is informed by Mikhail about the inquiry and the police's request for a search warrant for their residence. When Ulrika decides to investigate her daughter's bedroom, she discovers a bundle of bloody clothing hidden beneath her bed. She goes to her father's room at his retirement community, where she puts the clothing in Stella's phone and a dresser drawer for safety. Additionally, flashbacks to the events leading up to Stella's first encounter with Chris and his eventual murder are woven throughout the narrative. Chris appears like a kind person at first, even if he's too old for Stella, but it doesn't take long to realize that he has a darker side. Even trying to warn Stella about him, his ex-girlfriend Linda persuades her to look inside a cabinet drawer at his house. Stella discovers a large amount of cocaine there, and we find out about his dubious criminal record from the police investigator. Adam takes a shine to this information and one day even pays Linda a visit to see if he can link her to the murder as a potential suspect. Ulrika also begins investigating Stella's acquaintance Amina, who deceives Ulrika into believing she doesn't know Chris well. We find out through memories that Amina received a ride home one night with Chris, despite her seeming quite shady about it. As everything is coming apart in real time, the memories start to depict Chris in a worse light. Despite Stella's evident discomfort, he attempts to force her into allowing him to take her nude photos. Later, when he gets the notion that sleeping in a priest's bed is appealing, he almost rapes her in her parents' bed. Stella recalls being raped by Robin, and it's obvious that she feels threatened at that very time. If your lover begins to remind you of your rapist, this is definitely not a good indication. Stella is still being held in detention for her trial at this time. She began seeing a therapist there, who assisted her in beginning to process what had occurred to her when she was 15 and even convinced Stella that the rape was not her fault. Unexpectedly, Amina walks up to meet Ulrika at the Sandel residence and says, he wasn't supposed to die. After Amina tells Ulrika the truth about what actually transpired with Chris, Ulrika advises her to keep her account to herself until the trial. Ulrika throws away all of the evidence she possesses, including Stella's bloodied garments and the recently discovered murder weapon, after speaking with Amina. Around Stella, Chris acts strangely and possessively more and more. Linda shows up at Stella's residence in an attempt to reach her again, telling her that the medicines she discovered in his closet are what he uses to drug and exploit females. Stella begins to ignore Chris's phone calls and texts the next day. Stella and her parents are getting ready for the trial right now. The Judicial Chamber We find out throughout the trial and a number of ominous flashbacks that Chris had followed Amina to the pub where she was supposed to meet Stella the night before he was killed. He led her back to his place where he sexually assaulted her after tricking her into drinking poisoned wine. Ulrika was expecting Amina to provide her version of events at the trial, not beforehand, and this is what Amina told her. Her rationale was that they would suddenly be unable to show beyond a reasonable doubt that Stella was the perpetrator if the prosecution found out that another suspect was in the vicinity of Chris Flat that evening. But if Amina had alerted the authorities beforehand, the prosecution would have switched to attempting to establish Stella and Amina's joint involvement. Amina tells the court what occurred with Chris during her testimony, but she withheld the information from the police because she was afraid they wouldn't believe her. She cites, as evidence, the fact that Linda, Chris's ex-girlfriend, attempted to report Chris but was ignored and that Stella was sexually assaulted at camp but her parents chose not to come forward because they were afraid no one would believe her. In the end, all the prosecution has to go on is a shoe impression to prove Stella was close to Chris Flat, and adding Amina as a new suspect only serves to confuse matters. Stella is acquitted of murder. What then actually transpired that evening? We see not just the trial proceeding but also the actual events of the night in issue. Chris did, in fact, drug Amina and rape her. Before attempting to flee with Amina, Stella sneaked into his flat and used bear spray to assault Chris. Chris pulls a knife and chases them out of his flat. When he stumbles and drops the knife, Stella snatches it up and repeatedly stabs him to death. Yes, Stella killed Chris, but it's obvious that she did it in self-defense and as a sort of catharsis for the justice she never received following her 15-year-old rape at the hands of Robin, as well as to exact justice for Amina. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.